So this is part two for making a surfboard blank of a whole series of making a surfboard. Um, okay, so if you missed the first part, I encourage you to check that out. I'll post a link in the description or in a card here or it'll be somewhere or you can just search on my channel. Um, so this video will be gluing a stringer into the uh, hot wired foam and then showing you how to hot wire and remove the bulk of the foam using a hot wire and a template. Next thing is I'm going to make a stringer and I like to make a stringer uh, just because I just find it easier and I prefer a stringer in my surfboards. But you can totally make one, uh, a surfboard without one. Anyways, so how I make my stringer is I use the Clark Foam Surf Blank catalog, catalog that's out on the internet. You can find this, just do a search for it. And what it is, it's a nice comprehensive catalog of all of the foam blanks that they manufactured before they went out of business. So do a search, Google search for that, that'll come up. So this is the one that this stringer I have here is based off of. And what I've done is, this is a stringer that I like. I have a whole stack of stringers that I've uh, kept for all the surfboards I've made, just that so it's easy to reference. And I have a template for me to trace out uh, if I wanna use it again, which in this case, I wanna reuse the 7-3 uh, blank. And it, you know, it gives a little history, says it's great for um, A shapes, which is exactly what I'm looking for. Has a flatter rocker profile, which is what I'm looking for. I want something with a flatter rocker, a little bit uh, faster, um, less aggressive on the nose. So that's what, I'm look what, I, what I want. So what the catalog template gives you is it gives you the dimensions measured from the bottom up, all of these corresponding numbers. This one here says three and seven eighths, so it's three and seven eighths measured from the bottom up. And then same with here, this is two and a half, and you just, each corresponding point, and all I did was I transposed those points to a piece of wood, and then connected the lines together, and then that's same with the top. And the top is, it's the thickness at that point, so I just added on, so um, say in this middle part here, it says it's uh, 7 sixteenths, and then I add on 2 and 15 sixteenths, and that gives me the top mark here. I have another video on how I make uh, this stringer. I'm not going to go through doing that. This was just a quick overview. Uh, I'll link that in a card or in the description below, or just do a search for it in my, uh, my other video series on how to make a surfboard, the first one. So, here is the original one take the camera off here. This is the original stringer that I have kicking around and I even write on it uh, 7.3 Clark foam and then I cut it down to a 7 foot template and I used it for the single fin retro board previously. So I have another piece of plywood here and I'm going to trace out the template. I've already started actually tracing it out but I'm going to trace it out so that I have uh, one for this board. But I keep two extra pieces because I use these as a template to hot wire the blank once I'm done. And I'll show you how to do that once I get to that portion. So I'm going to trace this out, cut this stringer out. Uh, I probably won't bother to film that. It's pretty straightforward. Cut it out, use a plane, shape it, sand it, however way you want to do it, bandsaw, jigsaw, handsaw, whatever. Maybe I did, just to expand, maybe I didn't explain how I made the te uh, rocker template uh, very clear. And instead of going to just look at my other video, I'll just do a really quick one minute uh, thing of how I did it. So this here says three and seven eighths. So what I did was I took that three and seven eighths, I came over here, I measured up three and seven eighths, made a mark. Then I went to the next spot. The next one is one and three quarters of an inch. So then. I measured, and these are all in one foot increments, by the way. So it's one foot, one foot. Same counting from the back, one foot, one foot. So I went here. This is one and three quarters. So I measured a foot from here down to here, and then I made a mark one and three quarters. So let's say I marked it here. Then going back and looking, the top mark is two and seven eighths. So from this mark here that I would have made, I added two and seven eighths until I got up here and then I made a mark. 
I would do all of these marks like that and then I would lay something down, uh, a dowel, and then I would just create an arc. There's, uh, there's no magic sauce to doing this. All I did was I just kind of eyed it. I held down one point, I held down another point, and then I traced it. I'm not showing you how to do it because I already have a template done here. Um, so I'm just going to trace that. It was a little easier. But if you wanted to make one, uh, there's another way of doing it. You could trace it off of an existing surfboard or you could just freehand one uh, how you think you might, you know, think a stringer might suit, you know, you based on if you've ridden a bunch of boards and what you like. That's certainly an option. I don't like to recreate the wheel. I, you know, there's some really great blanks uh, in this catalog or uh, stringer templ uh, templates. So I'm just copying those. There's enough uh, learning curve in building surfboards. Why reinvent the wheel? Now that we have the stringer all cut out, it's time to just profile a little bit and I just use sandpaper to smooth it out and I use long even strokes when I do it. So that way I don't get any low spots anywhere, just work through it. The other thing is if you don't have this stringer perfect, don't worry about getting it perfect because you can shape it afterwards a bit a little harder um, using a spoke shave and a planer uh, once the board is put together. No different than how someone would traditionally shape uh, a surfboard. Um, and if you're cutting a concave into the board, you end up having to cut into the stringer anyway. So if I were you, I would size this stringer close to what you think you want the profile to be. The, like the thickness in the middle is probably key. How thin you want the nose, how thin you want the tail. I kind of already know how thin I want mine. So I've already kind of pre-shaped it and it's already close to what I want. That way it saves me just a bit of time. If this is your first board, leave it a little bigger uh, and then you can play with it once, uh, once you have it glued into the blank. You want to get down low and check it every once in a while. Make sure that you don't get any weird bumps or any uh, low spots. What I use to do the sanding is just this cheap sanding block thing. It's got a little bit of foam, but I don't want it to be too soft. I want it to be a little bit more rigid. And I got some really coarse sandpaper to really bring it down. This is some 40 grit, really good quality sandpaper. All right, so we got our stringer all cut out and sanded. Look down the top and the bottom. So I'm looking down the bottom right now. It should have a nice sweeping arch. Same with the deck. You want it to have a nice curve to it. Look down both sides, look down from the back, look at it from every single angle. You don't want any weird bumps in it. You want nice smooth arcs in it. I don't know if you can get this on camera very well, but that's what we're shooting for. Keep working at it and it'll come along. You don't want weird bumps in it. The smoother the arcs, the better and easier it will be to shape your board. Okay, so now I have three stringers cut out. This is the one I just finished cutting out based on my template, but you might have just made yours based on the Clark phone blank or you made your own. Regardless, I have three stringers. These were existing ones I already had and I like having uh, keeping a record of the previous stringers I've made in boards. Now, what I'm going to do with these two extra ones is use it for the template for uh, hot wiring out the blank. What I did to make all three equal previously in another surfboard was I used uh, carpet tape and I taped all three pieces of plywood together. Uh, I think this plywood also, I don't know if I mentioned this stringer material is I think 3 16 of an inch thick, about four millimeters uh, for you guys who use the metric system. Uh, except for in Canada, we use the metric system. 
but we still use inches for construction and everything else. We're messed up. Anyways, I, glued, I uh, stuck them all together and then I cut them out and I shaped all three at the same time, or four depending, but I did three. I used one in a previous board, so that's why I'm making this third one here. So that's the stringer. All done. So let's glue this stringer between our foam. And that'll conclude building the actual blank itself. All right, so this next step, so this next step is completely optional. Only do this if you're going to hot wire a blank, but on the two sides of the two pieces of foam now that have been hot wired out, um, I'm going to trace the template of the surfboard stringer on both sides where I'm going to glue it in the center. So I'm going to flip this guy up. So what I'm going to do is flip this guy up, lay this guy down where I think I want the stringer to, that will lay, that will be glued in the center. So I'll grab the camera and show you. So I'm going to glue the stringer something like this, probably very close to the top here, close to the middle here. I'll take some more precise measurements and make sure, but I just want to show you real quick roughly how this is going to work and then that's going to glue in there and I'll measure down from here and what I'll do is I'll transpose all these measurements that I take on on this this side to the middle and to the other side of the other side of the blank of the other block of foam. I don't know if I'm explaining that very well but you'll see here when I actually do it. I'm going to do the same on the other side and trace it out corresponding on this side on that piece of foam. But right here I've kept it pretty close to to the to the top of this. I just really need to take one measurement on the back on the other side and then I can transpose the stringer. I'll measure in about an inch roughly. I want to remeasure this once I put the camera down but it's about an inch and then I'll measure down right here and it's about what is it five eighths maybe maybe less than 5 eighths and I'll call it a half actually and I'll transpose that measurement to the other side lay the stringer out trace it out and that'll be it so I'm going to flip this one up and then we'll want it to go this way so we're going to take the we're going to take the stringer and flip it over like that and I'm going to keep this fairly close to here like I did here and then on the back side, I'm going to take my measurement and transpose it down, and then I'll trace this out. So that's about half an inch right there. Should be good. Now we're going to glue the stringer in the middle of the two pieces of foam. I'm going to take my sanding block and I'm going to rough up the two sides because after hot wiring this it's really smooth and we want maximum adhesion so we're going to rough this up. I'm just going to trace out to make sure I've already positioned it where I want it. I'm just going to trace this out real quick. And that gives me a spot marked so once I put the glue down where to put this stringer back. Alright, like how we glued the blank together, the two pieces of foam together, we're going to take some water and we're just going to spritz the foam. Because we're using a polyurethane glue, the water activates it or helps it cure, I should say. So I'm just going to spritz the wood too with a little bit of water. And 
And as you can see here, it's already starting to foam up. So it'll fill a little bit of the gaps, but don't expect it to fill too much. You don't want it to foam up too much. So we're gonna clamp it nice and tight. Alright, I thought I could clamp it, but what I'm going to do is just clamp the, the front and the back just to hold this in place. What I found was by using clamps, it was putting too much pressure all in one spot and it was causing these the string or the bow. So I'm going to go back to using uh, weights like I've done in the past. So just grab a bunch of weights, uh, weights like this, and just put them in place. I repositioned the block of foam so I could get more weights on it. It was just hard to balance just on these two pieces of uh, on the stand here and the board. So I just decided to move it up onto my table. You could do this on the ground, obviously, on the floor, but it was just easier to do it up here. So I put weights every so often, and that's providing lots of ample pressure down on the stringer. So sometimes you just got to you got to improvise and just uh, go with it. I decided to try to, to use clamps, but it didn't work out. So I went back to my trusty method using weights. So this has been 24 hours now, and it's all set up. The polyurethane has, clued, uh, has cured, and it's bubbled up a little bit. So let's just remove the weights and clamp it to the other side of the foam. So very similar to how I did it earlier when I clamped the two pieces of foam together using a ratchet strap. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to, I have two boards underneath here that will push up against the bottom. I'll put glue on this, I'll put this on top, I'll lay two more boards that I have on the floor here on top and I'll put a ratchet strap all the way around uh, at various places and clamp it all together. I'm going to take my polyurethane glue, I'm going to spread this out. So I have all the polyurethane glue spread out. I'm going to spritz the other side of this foam really quickly with some water. I have my ratchet straps ready. So I square up the block of foam, then I put the other two pieces of wood on top and then I clamp it with the ratchet straps. It's a little bit of a balancing act to do this, but it hasn't slid, it's looking good. I undid this clamp, this um, ratchet strap here and I put a piece of plywood the same thickness as the stringer material or the stringer material here because this is where the, the stringer arcs and there's a large 
section of foam here that doesn't have any support. So when I was clamping down, it disproportionately pushed down here than on the front, and it wasn't clamping as well on this side here. So all I did was I stick this piece of foam here, provide some support. I did that on another section down on the other end of the stringer as well. So if you notice that happening, that's just a quick little trick just to prevent that from, from uh, happening. Next is to remove the bulk of the foam by hot wiring the blank. And I'm going to hot wire the top, the deck, and then hot wire the bottom by using the two extra pieces of stringers that I cut out. Now, if you don't have a hot wire in order to do this, you could remove this foam uh, by chipping away at it, by sawing at it, by routering it, use your imagination, sanding it works, it just makes a huge mess and takes forever. I've done it, so it's totally possible, but I'm gonna hot wire it. Uh, but you can totally just do it whatever way you think. Be creative. I think uh, a, a rasp works really well, like um, a sure foam, which is, I'll show you what one of those are later, but it's basically, it's a woodworking tool or foam working tool, I guess, and that removes foam really well. I think I have one here real quick. I'll just show you. So here's a sure foam. This guy here. This guy here is made by Stanley, and it looks like a rasp. And then when you hit foam with it, it just carves it up really nice. And then I got this one here. This is like a knockoff one. This is used for body work, for working on uh, Bondo. That works well too. So there's some options to remove foam quickly. It'll still take quite a bit. If you have a power planer, you could do that as well. Uh, so there's a few options. I'm gonna hot wire it. I have the stringer in, in the spot where I originally had traced out where the middle stringer is. So I have a reference point in order to lay this stringer. But I'm not gonna lay it exactly where I had traced out the template. I'm gonna actually move it up a little bit. So I have a little bit of leeway. So I have, It'll leave a little bit if, you know, my gluing wasn't exact or the template slipped a little bit or the stringer slipped a little bit. I'll ha I won't cut into the stringer or gouge the foam. So I don't want to be down like here when I'm hot wiring. I want this template to be up here. So that way when the wire, when the wire hits here, it'll only remove this much foam and not like this much foam if it's like, you know, down like this. That's very important. I'm going to just take, use some masking tape and tape this in place before I clamp it. Just so it holds it so it doesn't have any slippage. So this is what it looks like after taping it in place and then clamping both sides. So this is the, the right side or left side depending on which way you're looking at it. And then this is the other side. When we run the hot wire along this it'll hit the board here and then it'll just hit these two stringers and it'll peel off this foam. Really easy, saves a ton of time. a few bumps here but I'm gonna clean those up but now that I can see that I didn't cut into the stringer the middle stringer uh, I can safely now remove the rest but I'll remove the, the rest of the blank I'll just film some of it but that's kind of how you do it
here's the deck all hot wired. It looks a little rough in a couple spots, but that's okay. What I'm going to do now is flip the board over and do the bottom and hot wire that as well. I won't bother to show all the in-between steps, but you get the idea now how to do it. And it, it saves you a ton of time. You can see how close I got to the stringer here, like right here. So it's very effective. It just saves a lot of time and mess instead of shaving off the foam with uh, a rasp or sure foam. Alright guys, so that pretty much concludes the start and to finish from taking a block of foam, construction foam, to making it all the way to a surfboard blank like this. So this is what you would receive if you were to buy a blank from a manufacturer. And I've taken it from a block of foam and then sh pretty much cut it, shaped it into a blank uh, with a stringer. So the next video will be, so I'm going to end this video here. The next video will be shaping and profiling the board, so I'll make that into one video. So that's about it. So thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Give this a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll have the next video, I don't know, it'll be a little while. It just takes time to shoot, film, and then edit these out. So uh, I'll get it out as, as soon as I can. All right. Bye.